Hi, I'm Dr. Lee, a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist at Maria Fertility Hospital, Ilsan, Korea. Starting with today's episode, I will in full scale introduce the procedures and trial methods for a successful pregnancy. The very first treatment attempt when visiting a fertility clinic is a natural pregnancy by inducing ovulation. Let's take a closer look at infertility treatment with clomiphene, the most commonly used hyperstimulation inducer, through various questions. This drug is actually called clomiphene citrate. When you first visit a fertility clinic or hospital, this is the first and mostly commonly used medicine. After undergoing several basic tests, if there is anyone here who remembers being treated by me, you are mostly likely sent back home with prescribed with these medicines. Why would this medicine be prescribed when diagnosed with infertility? Among the causes of infertility, ovulation disorder occupy the greatest frequency. An ovulation disorder is when an egg that should normally be ovulated every month does not take place. Uh, this can happen for several different reasons, and it is a major cause of infertility. Clomiphene helps overcome ovulation disorder, the most common reason for infertility by stimulating a regular ovulation. When used by someone who does not have an ovulation disorder, it simply increases their pregnancy rate by causing hyperovulation of more than one egg. Ovulation inducer, hyperovulation inducer, what is the difference? Normally, only one follicle is grown per menstrual cycle, and only one egg is ovulated. Before the egg mature, about 2,000 immature eggs will throw in their tickets to participate in the competition of being ovulated. And only one egg will be selected at the end of this long journey and the follicle formed by this egg will eventually become a dominant follicle. And that will lead to ovulation where it will grow and emerge. This kind of dominant follicle selection contest starts every month, but their journey begins actually two to three months prior. And this process is called a natural ovulation. Induction of hyperovulation Refer, refers to process of growing multiple follicles by strongly stimulating the ovary that will normally produce only one dominant follicle at a time. And this is done by artificially administrating a large amount of FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone from the outside. But uh, this does not force out the immature eggs that are not ready for ovulation. This method of induction simply matures several follicles that would have been degenerated in the competition if left alone in the natural cycle anyway. The amount of FSH secreted by the body can be increased by taking medicine, but it can also be increased by direct administration of FSH injection. For those with severe ovulation disorders, such as aforementioned polycystic ovary syndrome, the process of natural ovulation does not occur well due to the excessive increase in male hormones. Too many eggs were excessively engaged in the ovulation competition process, so it is difficult to decide who will be selected as the winner to be the dominant follicle. Ovulation inducers simply plays a role of slightly pushing the wheel that is too heavy to roll on its own. However, if accidentally or incorrectly calculated and pushed too hard, too many eggs can be induced, leading the side effect of hyperstimulation syndrome. And I will explain this specific side effect in the other episode. In summary, for a person to ovulate normally, an ovulation inducer will cause hyperovulation. And for someone with an ovulation disorder, this will help to induce ovulation. Doesn't everyone ovulate? 
Why use ovulation inducers when one can ovulate normally? Ovulation inducers are not necessary for those who have regular menstruation and ovulation. However, since they have yet to succeed in the achieving natural pregnancy through one egg that is ovulated each month, ovulation inducers are given to promote hyperovulation, which increases the pregnancy rate. Is clomiphene a safe drug? How do you use it? Clomiphene was first developed in the 1950s and has been used in the United States for a very long time since the 60s. Clomiphene, which is most commonly prescribed by domestic OBGYNs, has the advantage of being affordable while induces successful ovulation well over in 90% of women. Generally, one to three tablets are taken orally daily for five days from second to fifth day of menstruation. However, I recommend choosing a specific time every day and taking it all at the same time. Each person has a different ovulation response, so you could start with one or two tablets and adjust the dose up to three tablets while watching your body's response. If your follicle does not grow well after taking clomiphene for three days, you can extend the taking the medicine up to five to eight days. In addition to these methods, doctors may consider using diabetic drug as an aid to clomiphene or switch to an ovulation inducer called Femara or recommend receiving hyperovulation injections. The United States FDA allows the use of these drugs for up to six cycles, and the International Board of OBGYN reports that it is safe for up to 12 cycles. There are often cases where clomiphene thins out the internal lining of the endometrium or decreases the fluid within the cervical mucus. In these cases, switching out clomiphene with femara instead is recommended. There is no need to worry as these are slight side effects and they will go away once the medication is altered. Femara or letrozole, which is widely used after clomiphene is best known as a breast cancer treatment. And some patients avoid it because of the perception that it is an anti-cancer drug. However, letrozole is used as an anti-cancer drug because it has an effect of suppressing the type of cancer sensitive to estrogen, like breast cancer. And it is completely different kind of an anti-cancer drug that we see in dramas, which causes hair loss or vomiting. And unlike clomiphene, letrozole has a short half-life and does not have side effects of thinning the endometrium or drying the cervical mucus. Letrozole is used in the same way as clomiphene and has a fewer side effects in many, many ways. But it is not administered as a primary drug because it is more expensive than clomiphene. How does clomiphene work? Clomiphene binds to the estrogen receptor in the hypothalamus, making the body perceive that estrogen levels are low. Therefore, the FSH and LH secretions is promoted in the pituitary gland, helping many follicles to grow in the ovaries. Then who is it used on? As mentioned earlier, it is used for women with poor ovulation, especially in case of someone who suffers from polycystic ovary syndrome, where ovulation does not occur regularly. When these women take clomiphene, the follicle growth takes place, making it possible for ovulation. In addition, clomiphene is sometimes taken for purpose of inducing hyperovulation when performing artificial insemination or in vitro fertilization. In the case of young women who have no abnormal finding in their fertility test and does not have a long infertility period, they may be advised to take clomiphene empirically since they were not able to succeed in the pregnancy with only one egg being ovulated. 
This method induces hyperovulation for a better attempt of a natural pregnancy. Are there any side effects of clomiphene? Side effects of clomiphene may include nausea, vomiting, hot flashes, headache, abdominal discomfort, and visual symptoms that appear to be shaking or, or blurry. But these side effects rarely occur and multiple pregnancies occur in about 8% of those who use clomiphene. In addition, clomiphene has an anti-estrogen effect on the mucus of the endometrium and the cervix. And due to this effect, the endometrium, which is thickened by estrogen, may thin out and be accompanied by the side effect of a decreasing cervical mucus. However, due to the short half-life, the above anti-estrogen effects are rarely seen. If you do experience these side effects, you can try Femara in the next cycle. If I become pregnant after taking clomiphene, are there any risks of malformation due to the medications? No, there are no clinical reports or evidence that clomiphene causes birth defects. Does clomiphene cause miscarriages? Early studies show that pregnancy after taking clomiphene had a higher miscarriage rate compared to a natural pregnancy, but, but recent studies and follow-up studies have revealed that there is no significant difference from the miscarriage rate of a natural pregnancy, so you don't need to worry about it. Does clomiphene make you more prone to cancer? According to two large-scale studies, such as studied by Whitmore in 1992, Rossing in, in 1994 in the New England Journal of Medicine, it was argued that women exposed to hyperlobulation-inducing agents, such as clomiphene, has a significant increase of ovarian cancer. However, after these studies, an additional eight case control studies found that the use of infertility drugs, even when they used for 12 months or longer, was not associated with the increase in the ovarian cancer. Is it still okay for me to take clomiphene if the ultrasound performed on the third day of menstruation shows a cyst on the ovary? Cysts that are visible on the ovaries during the early stages of menstruation is usually called a functional cyst. It looks very similar to a follicle that actually ovulates and most of it disappears on its own. Many doctors describe it as a benign cyst and although we associate these cysts or lumps to be cancerous or life-threatening and detrimental to our health, these types of cysts has nothing to do with that and it will most likely to disappear on its own. In the case that you have a functional cyst on the ovary and an ovulation inducing agent is administered, they often grow together or the cyst continues to grow while interfering with the growth of the actual follicles. So therefore, for cysts that are bigger than 3 to 4 centimeters in diameter, doctors may give you a hormone drug, such as a contraceptives, and wait for it to disappear on its own. And, and in some cases, there are always exceptions, and these cysts are ignored and the procedures take place as planned. Is it normal to feel bloated and gassy after taking clomiphene? Among those who take ovulation-inducing drugs such as clomiphene or femara say that they feel bloated and very gassy, usually during the process of growing several eggs. It is normal to feel bloated in your lower abdomen or feel like you have indigestion. In addition to clomiphene and femara, you can experience a similar symptoms when undergoing artificial inseminations or in vitro fertilization and other ovulating injections. Most of the discomfort caused by the drug is released on its own after ovulation, so you don't have to worry about too much. However, 
if the pain only gets worse and the breathing becomes uncomfortable, please consult with your doctor as soon as possible. I hope your questions were answered today. And if you do still do have any other questions, please, please ask down below in the comment section or leave a message in the discussion room and I will answer them to the best of my ability. To all the couples out there who are suffering from infertility, I will be right by your side until the day where all of you become parents. I'm Dr. Lee, your online fertility specialist, and I hope you're successful this month. Thank you.